The news landed early on the morning of March 15, 2021, and immediately turned heads. Two of the biggest telcos in Canada were planning to combine in a sector-altering deal. Here's part of the cannibalism right here in terms of consolidation with respect to the space. We need to all go in eyes wide open in a transaction like this. I think the synergies are, to me, look very achievable, and I think the market would buy into that as well. Rogers Communications and Shaw Communications announced a friendly transaction in which Rogers would buy Shaw for $20 billion, or $40.50 per Shaw share, and take on $6 billion worth of Shaw debt. Right off the bat, the market knew this takeover would face some tough regulatory scrutiny. In a country where the price of wireless service is a perennial hot-button issue, politicians and regulators weren't going to give this deal an easy ride. The two companies certainly knew that. The deal announcement was laden with sweeteners, clearly intended to win over the federal government and regulators. Rogers said it would invest $6.5 billion in Western Canada to build out 5G networks and connect underserved and Indigenous communities. But Ottawa was not convinced the deal would benefit Canadians, particularly those in Western Canada where Shaw is most active. Industry Minister François-Philippe Champagne said he would not allow Rogers to buy Shaw's entire wireless business, most of it branded as Freedom Mobile. I will not allow the wholesale transfer of licenses from, from Shaw to Rogers. Uh, what we need in this country is more competition, more affordability. Canada's broadcasting regulator, the CRTC, approved Rogers' purchase of Shaw's broadcast distribution assets, cable, satellite and IPTV despite opposition to the deal from a key Rogers competitor, BCE. BCE is the parent of BNN Bloomberg. The most significant foe of the deal, Matthew Boswell, Canada's competition commissioner, filed an application to block the transaction, arguing the takeover would mean higher prices for consumers. Rogers got the message. Buying Freedom Mobile was a non-starter. And in June, Rogers and Shaw agreed to sell Freedom Mobile to Quebecor, which provides wireless service in Quebec under its Videotron banner. We also proposed to divest of Freedom Wireless to another wireless operator that would create an even stronger fourth wireless operator. So networks in Canada would have even more diversity. By purchasing Freedom, Quebecor would expand its wireless business substantially into large swaths of BC, Alberta and Ontario. And a sale of freedom would make the Rogers-Shaw combination centered almost entirely on internet and cable television services. Champagne, the industry minister, says he's willing to approve the takeover, provided the sale of freedom to Quebec or goes ahead and that Quebec or abides by certain conditions. Quebec or quickly agreed to those conditions. But Boswell never budged. The competition commissioner insists a Quebec or owned Freedom Mobile would be beholden to Rogers for certain wireline network services that wireless providers require, making Freedom a less than robust competitor. The proposed divestiture would create an unprecedented relationship of dependence between a big three competitor and Videotron. Videotron is a regional player without a track record or detailed market knowledge of Western Canada. Rogers and Shaw countered that the new Rogers would be a much stronger competitor to TELUS, the Vancouver-based giant in the internet and television services markets. A Rogers takeover of Shaw would be pro-competitive, they insisted, not anti-competitive. And a senior Shaw executive even said the takeover was necessary to Shaw's survival. He said Shaw didn't see a, quote, viable path forward as a standalone company. The hearing concluded on December 14th.